All right, folks, it is time for the much awaited video on how to hook up one of these to a Tormach. So, all right, uh, part number right here. This is the one that we're using for our fourth axis, both our fourth axis, actually. Um, this should work for any Tormach fourth axis because they're all a 90 to 1 gear reduction. Uh, doesn't mean that that's the right motor, but it's the one we chose. Uh, if you want to know more about it, Tall Technic. And actually, Tall is one of their tech supports. They'll step you through this whole process. Right. And getting the motor specs for what your application. So we're going to go up with this crazy box in here and do what all this electrical voodoo does today. I'm going to show you how to wire all of that up to make this go. Alright, first, where are the wires? These connectors are not watertight. All right. They're like dust and splash proof, but not watertight. So use dielectric grease when you connect these. And then make sure you have some kind of provision for a splash guard to keep the coolant off the motor. Alright. Uh, we just drilled two pull holes here, bent one out of some acrylic, and mounted it on top. Now, ours keeps breaking because our the coolant we're using is uh, Simcool, and it works fantastic, but it does a number on plastics. It, it shatters them in a couple of weeks' time. So we're trying to we still have to solve that issue. So um, for us, these are repair part or expendable parts that we repair on about every two weeks. So it's time to repair this one. But anyway, moving on. Uh, let's look, talk about our data cables. So we've got a blue cable coming out of the back of the clear path. That's for data. And we've got a black cable. That is for power. All right. So let's talk about that black uh, cable first. All right. This is a black wire. Snakes its way up through our wire loom and comes out here. Okay. This runs up to our A-axis stepper driver. Now, why our stepper driver? Well, stepper drivers also supply power to steppers. As it turns out, uh, these run at like 70, 72 volts, something like that. Um, so they work fine for powering a clear path servo. Caveat. They're not the correct power supply in that they are not linear. They do droop under load. Right? After doing some testing and having the uh, technic, technic, tech folks um, look at our uh, oscilloscope readouts from the back of these. Yes, these do have a built-in oscilloscope. Uh, after having them look at the oscilloscope readouts and doing some testing with us, on our machines, we're looking at about a 10% uh, power loss to the motor uh, when under full load uh, using these power supplies. So you could replace that. You could replace that with the actual Techno power supply if you wanted to, uh, or just deal with the 10% power loss, which is what we're doing right now. Though we may actually fix this sooner rather than late when we finish the rest of these motors. Um, all of these power supplies will have similar settings as the A-axis. Uh, refer to your Tormach wiring diagram to make sure that it is correct. I'm fairly certain that these all have the same wiring on the ribbon cable, but don't hold me to it. So, check your wiring diagram, uh, but here's how we wired the axis. So, first off, uh, power supply uh, comes into here. Um, I can't read those numbers on the wires, you get the actual wire numbers. But, physical location, black wire, negative, top port. Red wire, positive, bottom port. Right there, top two. Supply. One, two, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. Black in the top, red in the second, second, first one down from the top. So, port one, port two, black, red. You can also read that on side, on the, in the wiring diagram on the side of the stepper driver if you would like. Check out your wiring diagram for mock as well to make sure you get it right. This is a DC power supply, so you could blow something up if you hook it up wrong. Um, though I am pretty certain that Clear path uh, has this protected so as long as you don't overdrive any of the wires with more voltage than is required, that you can't actually break anything. Remember them telling me that, but I could be wrong, so don't hold me through that. So just wire it up right. And the right way to wire that is black in the top, red in the bottom, or whatever your wiring diagram says. But on this on this particular driver, black top, red bottom, that's for the A-axis. Okay? Now, you'll need one of these. So I got that part number. Okay. All right, got part number? Cool. So, where does this ribbon cable come from? Well, we stole it right out of there. All right. Tormach sends your data that you use, or does the step in direction, to this terminal block, or what is that called? I don't know, this block right here, through this ribbon cable. All right, that ribbon cable, you need a, you're gonna need a breakout board for it. Again, see that part number? Done the hard work for you. It's right there, we'll get it. 
All right, because these are a pain in the butt to search for, mainly because I don't know what they're called. So, anyway, um, you are going to port the wires that are used in this uh, are four, three, and five. The rest of them are just dead. All right, so. Now, what does that translate to, to our blue data cable? With our blue data cable, we have eight or 10 wires. So the first one we're gonna go over are our step and direction. All right, this is the negative for step, yellow. Negative step, yellow, goes to, goes to port, or port four on your breakout board. Negative for direction, that's your brown, goes to five. All right, black and white are your po positives. They're sent to a common five volt source on port three. This is all spelled out in your Tormark wiring diagram. Check it out to make sure it's the same. This is for a 77, 770 series three. All right, so that's how you hook up. Now Tormark does things backwards from what everybody else does. These are switched on the negative side for step and direction. So your step and direction signals actually come on the negative side of the wire. That's gonna be your yellow and your brown. These are, your, these are gonna be a common five volt. Now all your other systems, your switching will actually happen here, and these will be wired to a common ground. So, make sure you get that right. Form like does it backwards. Okay? So, that's your step and direction signals. Next, you gotta turn you gotta turn the motor on with the enable pin. The enable pins are orange and blue. That's these two. They need a conf, they need a five volt signal to turn on. Alright? Now, I blew up two of those. Well actually I didn't blow those up, I blew up a parallel port. But blowing up two parallel ports in Tormox uh, before I figured out that I was that this there that wasn't going to work. Um, I tried Tor the Tormox text port was really helpful trying to figure out where to get five volts out of one of these for the enable pin, but um, it never did seem to work right. So after blowing up two parallel ports, I gave up and just got mains power from there. That's where these wires are wired into mains power. Yeah, you can see that they all go to those front three pins. Check your wiring, Tormach wiring diagram to tell you where to get your uh, line one or your black, white, and green. This is AC power. It will kill you. Don't get it wrong. All right. So run your mains power up here to your five volt power supply. Then pull five volts to, put, to turn on your motor. Now that is not a switched power source. That is always on because I'm being lazy right now and I haven't really figured out how to wire that up to a switch source. Uh, because, well, I've only got one motor hooked up and I plan on doing the other three sometime in the foreseeable future and I'll address that um, when I get around to getting the other motors installed. So, next, uh, the, the, those other power cables you see coming out of there, they run over here to tap power for our 12 volt or 24 volt power supply to run our actuators for our bar puller and parts catcher. So we'll go over those in another video if you guys actually want to see how that's done. But all that uses uh, Tormach IO board. So, all right. Next up, you would see uh, the, there are two other wires in this wiring thing that you're not going to see. They come out of your blue uh, cable right here, and they are red and green. Yeah, that's your high level feedback. They're buried somewhere in that blue wire loom, and I don't feel like digging them out. Uh, so pretend that I'm pointing at red and green wires right now. Yeah, they're right there. And pretend somewhere in that area. Right down there. Um, they basically will e-stop, can e-stop the uh, system when the motor trips out. So if you were to overdrive this and it was to get completely lost and couldn't correct itself, uh, this will start flashing uh, amber and then uh, the motor would stop running. So that means the fourth axis stops spinning. And you can, in theory, act like it hit you hit this button when that happened all right by simply wiring it into your e-stop wiring stuff okay i didn't do that because i was being lazy and i like i said i have three more motors to hook up to that so yeah it's buried somewhere in there and they're just twisted together to close the circuit for right now um now that should take care of all your wires it's really that simple so your enable pin orange and blue get a five volt signal for those all right, yellow, that is focus, focus, yellow, step, negative, brown, direction, negative, black and white, positive, common, 
And that's all it is for wire. All right, now for the really sketchy stuff. We're gonna dig under the hood and path pilot. If you don't know how to get to this screen, you hold shift and alt while your machine boots up. It'll dump you into some archaic version of Ubuntu. So, this is gonna be fun because I'm bidding on a screen while I'm holding something. Applications, accessories, um, G-Edit text editor. All right, so you're gonna open, go down to mill data. No, not mill data. Where's this thing? I'm gonna go backwards. All right, let's try this again. Open, TMC, configs, one mock mill. Find the one that is specific to your machine. 440, 770, one of the 1100s. I don't remember which one. I did it over there, but I don't remember what one file that is. So poke around to find the right one. All right, 770 I and I. Now, cool thing about Linux is if you've opened a text file, it will default you to the last spot where you edited. So somewhere around that line number, you're going to find the things you need to edit. You're looking for Axis 3 in particular. All right. Now I've got commented out what I think were the original values, but at this point I could be completely and totally wrong. I think the original values were 66 and 79. I think that's what they were. Max velocity. This is a scaling thing. Uh, so these aren't steps per direction. Uh, I don't really understand how this works. I just used a um, ratio to make these what I wanted them to be. So anyway, um, for I think I'm using 800 as the uh, steps per revolution settings on that motor. I will go over that here and just minute when I look up the laptop to it. So this uh, at 800 steps per revolution should have max velocity 148. Max acceleration, 3,500. Step gen, this is kind of like your buffer, so when it tries to start stepping, it'll actually go a little higher for acceleration rates. Um, the max you can do, Fromach had commented in here 20% higher, so that's the numbers we're using, is roughly 20% higher. Max step gen, max velocity, 178, and max acceleration, 4,200. All right, up your jog ring, shuttle speeds. There's your direction, setup, hold, step length that space. I think those are all default Tormach. And then down here in your PID tuning, these are not default Tormach. This is what works for us. This may not work for you. I know that this machine here, the 770 and the 1100, I have slightly different var variations of what works, but this is how it works in the 770. All right. So, and then there's your scale here. F error, min error. Alright, this actually set the scale numbers, what sets your steps per re revolution or steps per inch or something. This is the number that changes. I think this was the original, and then this is what we changed it to 500 to 200. Alright, I think that's right. It's been a while. Make it look like this, and it should work with that motor. Alright. Uh, we don't have four Dacus homing on this machine, so these are all zeroed. <coughs> And these values used if fourth axis homing is enabled. We're not doing any of that. Um, ignore our limits, yes, and home sequence is one. So we're not homing this, machine, homing this particular axis. So that is how you change those. That is in Tormach 770 INI, axis three. Do, 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 do. Change them to look like that. Then you hit that button right there, and then close that, then you're going to hit power, restart. Okay, so the next step is to find you a Windows box, something like a laptop that you can bring to your computer, to bring down to your machine, and open up ClearPaths MSP. This is their free tuning software. Right now, I'm searching for a clear path motor. Why? Because I have the data cable not plugged in. It's right there. See? Boom. Boom. Okay. Then, pull that plug. 
which has a nice little connector, Schrodinger's USB. There we go. All right, is it up? Is it down? And there we go. Now, by this point in time, that should have restarted back into your Formock values or your your Formock uh, controller screen. Wait, reset, reset, power, lights, and then hit the reset button here. All right, so now we should be good to go. Everything's okay. You can use your to spin your fourth axis. All right, now it won't be right, but it should be working at this point. Or actually, it won't be working for you at all because you haven't tuned your motor yet. But since I've already tuned mine, it works. So anyway, plug that in. Green blinking status light. Third path motor test and communication. For some reason, this hangs for me occasionally. And I have to unplug and plug back in several times. I think it's because my USB cord is crappy. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this motor already being tuned has a label Colossus A axis. Alright. This is the screen. Uh, input resolution 800 millis 800 pulses per revolution. RAS jerk limit 16 milliseconds. And some other stuff down here. You can actually open up even more information. Oscilloscope I think is right there. Yeah, there's your oscilloscope. So you can really dive off into the weeds to figure out how your motor is going to set. I won't even pretend to know how this works because if I have to open up this, I call Technic and they do it for me because I'm a complete idiot when it comes to this. All right. Anyway, um, if you're not here, you'll need to go to Setup and then hit Auto Tune. All right. Let it auto tune. Follow the on screen prompts. Stupid simple. Ten minutes later, your motor will be tuned. Okay. Then you'll have a working motor on a full mop. Wash, rinse, repeat for X, Y, Z. Alright? Maybe or maybe that's X and that's Y. Or is that X and that Y? I know that one's Z. But I don't know what those two are. One was X, one was Y. So, anyway, that's how that wiring goes. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, leave a message in the comments down there and I'll see if I can't answer them uh, but yeah the only thing that's really part number specific is that I'm sure there are other part numbers but that's the one that I found and because I don't know what exactly what that's called that's the part number I would recommend looking it up at under it's like a 10 pin ribbon cable breakout board or something like that I don't know but that part number will get you the right part so Anyway, hope it helps.